Welcome to Conservative, uh, Conservative Roundtable. My name is John Estrada, and we're here today with a very, very great special guest, uh, Dennis D'Souza from uh, Hillary's America movie producer and uh, great advocate for uh, success. Uh, Dennis, thank you, and welcome to our show. Uh, hey, it's good to be on the show. Uh, go ahead and, uh, and tell uh, America, conservative America, why this election is so important. Well, it's important because we've been seeing um, under Obama an effort to, as he puts it, remake America. And by remake America, he means move power away from the individual and families and communities and more toward the central government. Uh, that uh, Obamacare was just a small example of that, their effort to take over a whole sixth of the U.S. economy. I think with Hillary, this problem will get much, much worse because the Hillary, because uh, not only does Hillary share Obama's ideology, but she's ten times more corrupt. Yeah, that's uh, that's um, terrible for uh, you know. It sort of hits the gut of of every American to find out all this uh, horrible stuff going on with our government. And uh, but this has been going on with the Democratic Party for a long time. Uh, you have a, a great uh, movie out there. Can we talk? Can you talk just briefly about uh, that movie and uh, and what people need to do to to see it? Yeah, the movie is called Hillary's America, and there's a book of the same title that's in the bookstores. Uh, the movie came out this summer. Uh, it was one of the, well, it's the, it's the most successful documentary film of the year, one of the top ten of all time. And um, and uh, it's now available in DVD, so you can get it in Walmart or Costco, or you can, you know, digitally download it from iTunes. So it's very accessible, and it couldn't be more timely just a couple of weeks before the election. What the movie does is it's an expose, not just of Hillary, but of the whole Democratic Party. And it really shows that the Democratic Party has been the party of slavery, of segregation, of racial oppression. Uh, the Democratic Party is the enemy of women and minorities and the little guy. So quite contrary to how the Democratic Party packages itself, the real history of the Democratic Party is the history of exploitation and theft. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. Many people don't even know that uh, uh, um, Abraham Lincoln was a Republican. Abraham Lincoln was a Republican. The greatest black heroes uh, have always been Republicans. Uh, Republicans are the ones who passed the civil rights legislation of the 1960s. The main opposition to the civil rights laws came from the Democratic Party. So all of this is not very well known. It's particularly not well known by minorities. And the Democratic Party has never accepted its own history, never admitted it, never apologized for it, never paid one penny of restitution for it. Yeah, you know, it's a pretty amazing. It would be great if they would teach us in school. The reason that they don't is because the progressives dominate the, the curriculum. They dominate academia, they dominate Hollywood, and they dominate the media. And so they're able to put out a lot of propaganda, a lot of disinformation, camouflage and hide their own crimes because they don't want people to know about them, especially young people. You know, it sort of sounds like what's happening with the polling companies today and the media companies is so much, it's so corrupt. What do you think about that, the polling companies and the media companies? Well, I think it's remarkable that they've been sort of, um, you know, when, when Trump said that the election was rigged and people were like, what are you talking about? This is a horrible thing to say in a democracy. But it, I, I can see that the, the election is rigged in two ways. The first is that the media, which is the filter, the way that most people get their information, appears to be openly colluding with Hillary. And we see from WikiLeaks that this open collusion means that they submit articles in advance, they give her debate questions in advance. They're essentially conspiring with the Hillary team. The other way the election is rigged is that they do what is called the weighting of the polls. And that means that even though they're supposed to poll a, a number of Republicans and Democrats that mirrors their number in the general population, in fact, they'll poll more Democrats to make Hillary look like she's winning. Yes, yes. It's, it's pretty, pretty incredible. And, and you know, uh, people have had a history of, uh, of uh, trusting uh, polls and, and trusting 
uh, media companies, but it's the way they're distorting the facts, uh, you know, not uh, talking about likely voters, but registered voters. And there's just so many different games that they're playing uh, on the American public. Well, I think the one lesson that we're now learning, and it's kind of a very powerful lesson, is that, you know, that the press is not really trustworthy. These people aren't really journalists at all. They're fake. Yeah. And so, I, you know, one can already declare that whoever loses in, on November 8th, one big loser is the mainstream media. Yeah, and I think that's uh, that's a victory for America. You know, um, I, hopefully when uh, President Trump uh, has his administration, they really take a look at the FCC uh, licensing and, and hold these uh, broadcast companies accountable for all their lies. Yeah, the media has become a big problem because the media is supposed to be a, a kind of a, apply a critical lens uh, to both sides to enable people in a democracy to make up their own mind. So I think as conservatives, as Republicans, we've got to realize that it's been a terrible loss that we've allowed academia, Hollywood, and the media to become so dominated by the left. Well, you know, you, you need to be uh, congratulated on, you know, putting out your message and your messages and, and keeping uh, uh, America, uh, conservative America informed. You know, uh, one thing I think, the, another lesson to be learned is that we need to develop a good conservative broadcast network uh, that people can trust and so they can get their information out. Well, that's certainly true. Uh, partly, we don't know what the future is going to be of the Fox News Channel, of course. We don't know the future of talk radio, but yes, I agree. Technology offers all kinds of opportunities to do that. In my own career, I've been a writer and speaker for many years, but I've pivoted into, into documentary filmmaking because I wanted to reach a wider audience. I remember that Michael Moore had made Fahrenheit 9-11 and dropped it into the middle of the 2004 campaign, and I basically thought, wow, if that guy can do it, how hard can it be? Well, I tell you what, you did, you did exactly what we needed at the right time, at the right place, and, and really, uh, we thank you for, for your hard work there. Um, so what, what's the next, uh, thing on your agenda? What's the next plan? Well, I've been focusing and will focus for the next two weeks on the uh, election debate and on the relevance of this movie to the, um, indictment of Hillary, because look, you know, we've lived under Obama, but at the end of the day, Obama is an ideologue. His ideology, I think, is pathetic and destructive, but that's what he believes. He's, um, you know, that's his vision for America and for the world. Uh, with Hillary and Bill, you're dealing more with Bonnie and Clyde. These are two <laughs> people who have been running rackets since the Arkansas days, and they've gone from zero to $200 million on a government salary. Uh, how have they done it? What product have they been selling? I mean, they clearly didn't invent the iPhone or start a business. So the product that they've been selling is actually American foreign policy and access to American governmental influence. So these are two of the most corrupt people to reach the top rungs of the ladder. And I just hope that Americans are wise enough to see through the squid-like cloud of obfuscation that the media is putting out so we can see the Clintons for who they really are. Yeah, you know, and just uh, uh, thank goodness for WikiLeaks uh, giving us all this ammunition. Uh, and now it looks like it's going to the White House and Obama and FBI and the Justice Department and all the other stuff. Yeah, WikiLeaks is the only real investigative journalism left in America. Yes. And so, uh, so what do you think about uh, the corruption in the higher places, not just uh, Bill and Hillary, but the whole government at, at large? Well, what's been particularly distressing, and I think even almost chilling, is to see the way it permeated the Justice Department and the FBI, because, you know, essentially with Loretta Lynch, we have Eric Holder and address, somebody for whom justice is a complete sham, somebody who can't be tried, you know, even if you had a smoking gun with Obama, standing over a bunch of people that he had recently had shot and there's smoke coming out of his gun. Uh, I think, you know, the Justice Department would issue a memo concluding that that was actually smoke and mirrors. We're all living in a mirage. It's an illusion. It didn't really happen. So, uh, you know, with the FBI, I had higher hopes for James Comey, but I think at the end of the day, he realized that if he were to propose an indictment against Hillary, it would never happen, and he would make a deadly enemy of the President of the United States, who happens to be his boss, and so he decided to let ambition rule over doing the right thing. And so we have a compromised Justice Department and a compromised FBI. 
Yeah, it's it's uh, pretty incredible, and, and it seems like uh, the information we're hearing that uh, maybe uh, the president uh, knew a lot more about that private server that uh, Hillary uh, had. And that wouldn't surprise me at all. Remember, throughout this process, Obama's been openly signaling both to Comey and to Loretta Lynch, you know, to be hands off Hillary because she's his anointed successor. So remember that these are two Alinskyites. They both studied under the gangster Saul Alinsky, who essentially learned his political lessons from the Al Capone mob. Now remember that when Alinsky was running his extortionist racket, Obama and Hillary were very young. And yet these two young con artists said, hey, listen, we got to go to Chicago and learn from the master, and then we can apply those lessons to politics, and they sure have. Exactly. Yeah, that's uh, it's been a, a tragic uh, journey, and, and hopefully on November the 8th we, we put it to an end. And uh, and so I'm with you 100%. The next two weeks we got to fight every day. we got to work hard and smart and uh, get our troops out on Election Day. Yeah, the movie's a really good weapon, and I, you know, I've actually been trying to push the Trump campaign and the RNC to distribute the movie to undecided voters, because I think the effect would be transformational. Unfortunately, they haven't done it to date, but I think as citizens, we should watch this movie and share it, particularly if we have friends who are Democrats, independents, minorities. It would have a very discombobulating effect on those people, so, because it's all true. I mean, the left has been screaming about this movie and screaming about the book, but they haven't been able to shake a single fact in either one. Yeah, it's, um, so, um, uh, at the end of the day, um, I think that uh, we need to just uh, work hard, and, uh, you know, there's a lot of information going out there about uh, minorities, too. You know, minorities have been kept in the dark for many years, trusting uh, the Democratic Party, and uh, they really not are getting, they're not getting very much for the bang for their dollar. Well, a lot of minorities think they can trust the Democratic Party, and they don't realize that this is the very party that put them on the plantation. This is the very party that threw the American Indians off their land and stuck them on reservations. This is the very party that sticks the Latinos into ghettos, barrios, and slums. So, in other words, this is the party that historically mistreated minorities and deserves none of their trust. Yeah, it's pretty incredible. Well, uh, Dinesh, uh, I really do appreciate your time, your effort, and everything you do for America. Uh, you're, you're a hero uh, to all of us, and, uh, you know, keep it up. And if there's anything Conservative America, Conservative Roundtable can do for you, uh, you let us know, and, and we're there with you, uh, uh, arms in arms, uh, trying to defeat this evil and this corrupt uh, government. Hey, I appreciate it. I'm going to be speaking at Penn State tonight, so... Uh Enjoyed being on the show and urge everyone to go take a peek at Hillary's America, both the book and the movie, and thank you for the time for letting me be on the show. Okay, thank you, and God bless, and have a great day. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Wow. Well, what do you what do you think, Chris? Wow. Well, it sounds like the kind of movie that people need to go, that people need to see, huh? Yeah, Hillary's America. Unbelievable. Uh, wow. And uh, it's, uh, it's a movie that basically uh, wow. lays out the facts of the Democratic Party, the party of uh, of uh, slavery. Yes. You know, a lot of a lot of uh, people, uh, they get they they somehow, uh, the Democrats are very good at saying the Republicans are bad for minorities, <laughs> but yet they have been evil to minorities. You know, it's like it's and you know it's about they're using crumbs. And they're using just a small piece of, of the pie Absolutely. where they're, they're getting the big pieces of the pie. They're getting the big pieces of, of, the, of the process. It's just truly amazing how this is going on. It's gone from, I talk to people about this all the time, um, it's gone from physical slavery to economic slavery. And you have so many millions of African Americans now dependent on, on the system and the government to take care of them. And, of course, Barack has expanded to that, that by I don't know how many percent. Hillary wants to continue the same things and push forward Obamacare, even though by their own economists they said it's a disaster and it needs to be changed. I think it needs to be repealed altogether. But uh, you know, it's economic slavery, and 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 it's amazing, like you said, how how well the left can portray people that want you to work and pay taxes and take care of yourself and make your own decisions, that's bad for you. And the people that want you to sit and wait 
for them to take care of you are good for you. If, and if that's what this country has come to and people accept that, God, I mean, God bless America. We are in serious trouble. Serious trouble. Yeah, you know, um, you know, you're, you're, um, you're a person that has come to America. You've paid your dues. You're American 100%. Some people would say that you are uh, um, uh, a minority. Uh, you know, I don't consider myself as a minority. I consider myself an American, 100% American. And, um, and so it, it's, it's amazing how the Democrats like to divide us all up into pieces and, and, and make us all want to fight each other. Divide because, you know, and, conquer. and that's, that's, a, that's the number one military objective, divide and conquer. Divide. There isn't anything more important than that other than Alexander's great idea of go after the leadership, get the leadership out of the game, yeah. and then everybody else flees like, uh, like uh, in different directions. Absolutely. So Absolutely. Um, here we go. We're working out there, and we're working hard to try to get Donald Trump elected to be president. Um, there's like uh, Dennis just said, there's a lot of misinformation out there. Uh, go out there. Don't pay attention to the polls. Don't pay attention to the corrupt media. Go out there and vote. Vote now. Don't wait for tomorrow. W vote now. Get your vote in. Absolutely. And while you're doing that, take your family, friends, neighbors, all with you, and vote for Donald Trump for president. And right down the line, vote for all the Republicans. Because the stronger mandate we have, the stronger uh, victory we have, the more we'll be able to get accomplished on uh, next January 20th. We'll, the first 100 days will be awesome. Everything that uh, Donald Trump laid out, his uh, 10 or 15 point plan, uh, will be achieved because we'll have the votes to pass anything we want. Absolutely. That's the time to get things done. So I would definitely recommend 100% go out there and vote and uh, and take somebody with you, family members, friends, neighbors. Um, if you want to call in right now, we're willing to take your call at 702-983-0711. Chris, there's uh, been just so much going on in these last few days. It seems like one more drip, one more information comes yeah. out from WikiLeaks or from some, some, uh, you would think that with all this damning information about Hillary Clinton, you would, you would think that it would be a landslide for Donald Trump. You would think. And you know what? I think it might happen. Well, I'm, I'm very hopeful. There is a good possibility. And, and you know, the, the media is trying all they can to disrupt and to prevent Americans from casting their vote. Absolutely. Vote. Well, the, it, it, they're letting it drip out. The the, the bucket is full of water uh, with incidents of, of Hillary Clinton and, and misdoings, and they're letting it drip out because they're hoping that, you know, not too much will come out until after November the 8th. But if people look in that bucket, it's full of, of uh, you know, things that she's doing wrong and, and the emails and Benghazi and so many other things. And I think it goes all the way up the chain to the president. I really do. And I think they're trying to do everything they can to suppress to the American people uh, what's going on. You know, one of the things I always say, all you have to do is look at the people that have been assassinated in the past. Um, you know, people always talk about Martin Luther King. Martin Luther King was a visionary. And, and one of the things he always talked about was, he didn't want a handout. He wanted equality. He was tired of handouts. He was tired of African Americans and, and other minorities being looked at as second class citizens. He said, I just want you to look at me and to judge me on the content of my character, not the color of my skin. So he didn't want a handout. And I honestly do believe this. I've always believed this. One of the main reasons that they took him out was because he was talking about equality. He wanted equal opportunity. And you cannot control an entire people if they have equal opportunity. I believe that they chose certain people out the civil rights movement to take the civil rights movement in a certain direction that would help the Democratic Party. They appointed certain leaders. They left leaders like Jesse Jackson, Andrew Young in charge of the civil rights movement to take it in a certain direction. I think that direction has been to be dependent upon the Democratic Party to take care of a large 
portion of the African American community to continue to look for handouts. And to me, that's totally against what Martin Luther King was preaching. He was preaching equality. He wanted to be able to go apply for a job, apply for a home loan, and be judged by my merit, not the color of my skin, and certainly not be dependent on the government to take care of him. That's not what he was talking about. And I think he became a danger to the, his own civil rights movement. I've always believed that it wasn't just a single shot, and it wasn't just uh, some lone crazy person that took him out. I think I think the government had something to do with it, and I think bills were beginning to be signed, and and I think he became a danger to his own movement and people that would rather get paid than people would actually rather see change. And I think that's happening a lot in the Democratic Party. People would rather the status quo with Obamacare and big government and, and the welfare state and a socialist government, you know, people would rather be taken care of and paid off than to see actual change. And that's what Donald Trump is talking about, making us great again, changing the way things are, getting rid of corruption in Washington, D.C., bringing business back, lowering taxes so you can choose what to do with your own money, not the federal government telling you what's best and what programs are best. The federal government, you don't work all week to have somebody tell you what to do with your money. That's your choice at the end of the day. So we need less taxes, less regulation for businesses, bring businesses back, bring money back. We need a stronger military so we can protect. We need stronger borders. We need more vetting of people coming in to our country from all over the Middle East and all over the world. And the first thing you want to do is you want to make your own house safe, and that's what Donald Trump is talking about. And that's why the Border Patrol, for the first time in history, is backing a president. And so I just think that it's such a clear choice. They're so different. I'm just amazed at them trying to muck up the game as if, you know, it's not that much of a difference. There's a huge difference between Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton. Huge. Well, well you know, the day that Martin Luther King um, was assassinated and murdered, uh, I was sitting in class. And uh, we didn't have no blacks in our class. We just had whites, white kids, and Mexican kids. Right. And um, I remember we got it through uh, a, uh, a notice from uh, somebody opened the door uh, in our room and he came in. And they said, you know, Martin Luther King had been assassinated. Mm -hmm. Without exception, the kids in that class were all crying. It was like it like it was like America hit a very bad part. Yes. I mean, people were like shocked. Yes. They could, how can this take place in America? You know, especially after you've got uh, uh, the president, John F. Kennedy assassinated. Mm -hmm. uh, everybody was going through all these assassinations, and then Robert Kennedy mm -hmm. got killed. So it was a time of uh, assassinations, a decade of assassina mm -hmm. assassinations, and it was pretty a pretty sad time in America's history, where where things like that happened. I guess today we're getting a lot better. Uh, at protecting uh, people in power mm -hmm. like that, mm -hmm. um, and if they are assassinated, it's very, done very quietly, mm -hmm. you know. But uh, no, I I think you're you're absolutely right on your observation. I think that uh, uh, minorities are are being manipulated um, to the fact that uh, uh, they have they have people like. Uh, Jesse Jackson and, and um, uh, the uh, the other gentleman, um, the Al Sharpton, Sharpton. The, the, the Reverend Al Sharpton. Yeah, I mean, uh, but let me ask you this: Were they ever elected to represent the black Absolutely people? Absolutely not. I, I, it was so weird. I came out of Seven Eleven yesterday and I stopped and talked to a a Metro um, police officer, a bike cop, and um, uh, the uh, yeah, and so. Anyway, no, I think what we've done is we've ran into a, a situation where um, where a lot of times the minorities have uh, been represented by people that are not trying to solve problems, uh, but they're trying to develop uh, more positions of power for themselves. So I, I, I definitely think that uh, every voter has every opportunity to represent themselves and represent themselves on who do you think is going to best represent America? Yeah. I'm sorry about that, John. I had a little frog in my throat, but uh, 
Yeah, just just getting back to my point, you know, and, and, and it's so weird. I saw a guy, uh, he had wrote a book, and I, I forget what newscast he was on, but he said, would Martin Luther King be a conservative today? And uh, he brought up some, some good points, but I stopped and talked to a police officer the other day, and we were talking about Black Lives Matter, and he kind of agreed with me that the slogan should be All Lives Matter, although he didn't, I won't say his name, but he, the Metro officer said he didn't have a problem with Black Lives Matter. He said that I don't see the problem with people standing up and, and uh, protecting their own interests in their own community. He said I didn't, I didn't see a problem with that, but he agreed with me that All Lives Matter. And, uh, you know, I, I told him, I said, you know, he, we, we got into the discussion about Jesse Jackson and, and, and some of the so-called black leaders, and I said, you know, in Chicago, he has very little respect or credibility. And I don't know why these, these uh, broadcasts and these news networks constantly have him and Al Sharpton and other people on as if we elected him a spokesperson for the black community because we haven't. We haven't. And, uh, you know, he, him and his family, his son is in prison right now, and he's been involved in, in many corrupt uh, uh, situations in Chicago, uh, the Rainbow Push Coalition Foundation, his church, and a lot of his organizations have been, uh, you know, had many lawsuits, and and you know he's been involved with a lot of crooked things, and you know he's he's more of an instigator. You know they bust people into some of these rallies, and you know the Rainbow Push uh, Coalition, and they have a lot to do with Black Lives Matter. And uh, to me, these are just organizations that just start trouble. When when Charlotte was going through what they were going through. A lot of the people that were demonstrating weren't even from Charlotte. They weren't even from the city. They were being bussed in. And it, it was so good to see some of the conservative African-American religious leaders in the community <laughs> begin to come out the second and the third night and take over the marches. And they went peaceful after that. So that just goes to show you how a lot of these organizations are just rebel rousers. And they get a lot of federal grants. A lot of these organizations, you'll be surprised, they get federal money for their organizations. And it's just, it's a crime. And, 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 you know, we all know Obama, you know, is from Chicago and he was an activist in the South Side. So, you know, you put two and two together because they, a lot of these people, it's not cheap to bust a lot of people around the country and get involved in these marches. So they're getting money and they're getting support from somewhere. And, uh, you know, it's just like the tapes that came out about the DNC busing people in the Donald Trump's, you know, rallies and starting. I mean, people don't want to believe this stuff is going on. These are the people that you have elected. And these are the people that you want to vote for on November the 8th to be the president of the country. You have a, a, a presidential candidate that buses people in to her competitor's rally to start fights. That's a crime. That's inciting a mob. And then has the gall to go on TV and say Donald Trump and his followers are a bag of deplorables, well, and and they're the ones that that start fights and and punch their. It's just it's such a double standard. Well, you it's know, amazing. Chris, just basically, it's not only planning the act; the act actually took place. Yes. That's a crime in itself. Yes. So you got actually more than multiple, uh, maybe six, seven different types of crimes there. And for for people to uh, support a candidate of corruption, she is the most corrupt politician I've ever heard run for office of president. I mean, I, it don't get worse than this. But you know what? In Chicago, I guess their politics are pretty rough. So I guess she learned all this stuff in Chicago. Yes. Yes, I mean, uh, it, it's amazing, like I said. I mean, both candidates come from Chicago, and, they, you know, that's one of the most corrupt political cities, as my friend always says, Rolando, you know, that's the only state to have three governors in prison at the same time. So that just but, lets you but know. Let me, let, me, let me ask you a question, Chris, okay? You would think, and the question is very simple, is Bill Clinton was governor of Arkansas, and Hillary Clinton was very influential. She was attorney there in Arkansas. Mm -hmm. You would think with, with them having that kind of clout in Arkansas, they would be winning that state today by a long shot. Yeah. But you don't hear the media saying they're losing by their 17 points in Arkansas. Basically their own home So home a lot state. of people, uh, take a look at that. If a person is judged where this is where they got their start from and people don't even want them in Arkansas, why should we elect them 
to represent all of us when in Arkansas alone they don't like them. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's, it's They've done so amazing. much corruption over Absolutely. there in Arkansas. Absolutely. I mean, she, even in, in the state of Illinois, it's going to be closer than people think. Uh, she's not loved in the state of Illinois and in the city of Chicago. She oh, really isn't. You know, now she's that you, now that you just brought that up, Chris, I I, I listened to uh, uh, Oprah's endorsement of Hillary, mm -hmm. and she out said, "You don't have to like Hillary Clinton; you just have to vote for her." That's right. Now, tell me, I've never in my whole entire life heard an endorsement <laughs> that's, like that's, that before. That's you don't <laughs> have to like a candidate. But you, you still have to vote it's for not that. much of an endorsement. Is I it? mean, I've, that goes against politics of voting for somebody. Absolutely. Before you vote for somebody, folks, that is the biggest falsehood I've ever heard in my lifetime. Absolutely. Oprah is totally wrong on that. If you're going to vote for somebody, you're going to have to like them because they're going to represent you. They're going to have the most powerful position in the world, and we better be able to like them. Because I've at least don't like him. I know some people love uh, people. I mean, I'll just I'll go that far and say I like a person. But love to me is very very special. And and if you want to love a candidate, that's fine. But liking him, at least like him. What do you think about that, Chris? I, I I don't think that they trust her. I don't even think the people voting in her trust her. I believe, and I said before, I think it's a movement. I think uh, it is it is a liberal left wing feminist movement and I think that uh, you know if they care so much about women why did she attack the women and sue help sue the women that claim that her husband you know uh, has sexual misconduct towards them where was her support for women that she supposedly has fought for 30 years for women but where was her support of those women when Sarah Palin could have possibly been the first female vice president, she just trashed her. She called her stupid. She made fun of her. You know, the entire left-wing liberal movement, they constantly, every day, made fun of this lady. This lady was the governor of the state of Alaska. And well, they made fun of her every single day. Where was the women's movement then? Where was the love for women then? Uh, you know, well, that's that's one of that. It's amazing she came out and 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 she's backing Donald Trump a hundred percent. You know, yeah. that's well, that's that's one of the great fallacies in logic is that they attack the messenger. You know, attack the messenger, and then if you kill the messenger, the message never gets out. Absolutely. And so that's the Democrats' uh, playbook. They do that time and time again. They go after the messenger. If you can't, if you take out the messenger, you're not going to be able to even listen to the message. Absolutely. So that's what they're doing with Donald Trump. They're going after him as a messenger. Absolutely. Well, Donald Trump's message is a great message. It's a it's a message of hope. Absolutely. It's a message of change. It's a me a message of good. It's a message of of bringing America to where it needs to be. Absolutely. Absolutely, you know, and and it, it's such a clear difference. Like I said earlier, uh, between the candidates and the direction that you want the country to go in, and you know, uh, uh, she definitely her programs, Obamacare alone. If they don't repeal it, your taxes are going to be raised. Um, they showed today, I forget the state. I think it was the state of Arizona that your premium is going to go up one hundred and eighteen percent if Obamacare is allowed to continue, and that's a swing state. Right now, Trump is up by two points in the state of Arizona. So for all of you minorities that are part of Obamacare or, or middle-class working people, your premiums are going to go through the roof. Now they're going to have to cover that. And the way they're going to cover that is they're going to raise your taxes. Well, um, you know, I think, I think a, lot, a lot of people are looking at just the cost to themselves. But I see it, the cost of creating jobs, the loss of jobs by Obamacare is horrendous because businesses now, small businesses, are looking at automation to get rid of those jobs so they don't even have to pay a lot of this insurance Absolutely. stuff. And so the, the real loser is a person looking for a job, an entry-level position, because they're going to lose those entry-level positions. Because Absolutely. a business is not going to be able to afford to pay all these, these extra costs and stuff like that. And what, what's so sad is that these, you know, these jobs are already minimum wage paying jobs, lower, lower wage paying jobs. And the only thing I've talked to a lot of people that work in these restaurants that are participants of Obamacare, and you have to work so many 
hours to even become a participant. So what they're doing is they're just cutting their employees down to three or four days a week so they won't qualify for health insurance. So it, it's just, you know, it's just getting word. This thing is just a massive mistake. And, you know, the liberals are too uh, arrogant to admit that, that it is a mistake. They won't repeal it at all. You know, if, if Clinton will continue, she said, well, there are a th th few things that we might need to tweak, you know, <laughs> and, it, and of course nothing's going to get done, and all of us are going to pay for this massive, massive health care disaster plan, you know, and, and you know, back in the day, O'Reilly and, and Hannity and some of them, they were some of the first to, you know, talk about it was going to be a disaster. And now Obamacare's own economists are saying that, you know, it's we don't have enough people in the system. The premiums are going to go up, and eventually we're going to have to pump money into it to keep it going. So it's just a disaster. It was That was his main thing that he ran on was health care for everyone. And people should have the right to choose, and you should have more competitiveness in these states from different health care companies. And that's what lowers your rates and not big government plans competition and free, you know, uh, 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 competition among businesses and people's right to choose. That's what lowers your rates when you can choose your own health care plan. It's not being told. And businesses then have a choice to choose which health care companies they want to go with in their own company. It's not being mandated to them. People don't like being having things mandated to them. They usually rebel against big government, especially small businesses, because the copay and paying into these programs are too big, and it and the small businesses they can't afford it, so they'll just not hire, which is why we have one percent GDP growth. They won't hire, or they will just cut hours. You know, so now you have a part-time job, lower-paying job, and less hours, but you have Obamacare. I mean, congratulations. Well, you know, like I've said before, uh, if they can't even get the Department of Veterans Affairs right. How the heck do they think they're going to get Obamacare right, uh, to America, to the general masses disaster. of all the people? It is crazy. It is crazy. You know, uh, it, 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 it just goes on and on of on of all the big government. Uh, it's that, socialism, John. Let's call it what it is. It's socialism. just doesn't work for us. That's what it is. It doesn't work for anybody. And the only one it works for is the people in power. The people in power Absolutely. are the ones that get the big contracts Absolutely. To, to get all these special uh, deals. And uh, that's how, like Dennis was just saying a little while ago, was that uh, from a very low-paying position, the Clintons became multi-millionaires yes. being in public service. Now, I don't know anybody that ever thought that was possible, but now that's happening more and more with a corrupt society. It's not supposed When you're going to public service, that's what it means, public service. It's not a rich, uh, quick scheme that these Democrats are, are developing. John, I remember when we were coming up and, and uh, you know, the 60s, 70s, whatever, maybe even in the 50s, uh, politicians usually retired and they lived on a very meek income. They were public servants. Today they get into politics and become multi-millionaires. What does that tell you? With the connections and with the income. Oh, pensions. They get huge yes. pensions. Yes. You know, talk. in fact, a lot of government workers are getting these big pensions. And so that's what's bankrupting a lot of the, the uh, different uh, uh, federal, state, and local agencies is that all these pensions, these people are living to be older and older and older, and they don't have the funding to keep paying all these pensions. So it's bankrupting a lot of these, uh, um, these government agencies. John, at the risk of embarrassing you, me and my wife, I always tell people whatever I talk about, in private or behind people's backs when I see them I let them know what I was talking about and me and my wife were we both very fond of you I mean we love Rolando's family but we've become very fond of you my wife always praises you she's like that's a, that's a sharp guy he's very intelligent and I, I turned to her the other day and we were talking about politics and, and you know runs for different offices and have you given up running for office maybe in the future or is that something that you would still think about well first of all I don't think I'd ever get elected to any office because uh, I'm not a sellout. I never have been. I never will be. Uh, I, I do what's good for America, and I believe in America, and I just, I just don't like the idea of having to uh, go to uh, contributors, ask for money, 
and then having to represent America at large. It's just a hard, very difficult position. And, and to be able to be competitive in elections, you have to have money. So what do you do? You go and you talk to all the rich guys in town. You get all their money. You put it into the campaign to get you elected. And guess what, what happens? You're going to have to do something for those rich guys, right? Yeah. I mean, it, it's just, and this is what's happening in our political system right now. So I can't do that. I've never, that's why I've never been able to get elected is because I'm not willing to sell my soul for that. I'm not willing to, to say, look it, you give me money for my campaign, I'm going to do special favors for you. It's just not in my, in, so to answer your question, I like the idea of what I'm doing now, broadcast. I like to create a nationwide, uh, like I talked with Dennis today. I said, that's what we need to do. We need to create a, a conservative broadcast network that gets the message out to the people so they learn from bottom line of how this system really works and what's happening to them. Do you think and, it's possible, John, that, that you can have a, a, a decent politician get elected to office without these massive campaign contributions? Well, I, I think the only one that's been able to do it so far is Donald Trump because he's got his own money, so he don't need to do that. Yeah. So I think that gives him a big advantage that he doesn't have to make these side deals. And, uh, in fact, there's going to be a lot of payback if he is elected because there's a lot of very powerful people that sabotaged his campaign from the establishment mm -hmm. to the status quo. Absolutely. So uh, it, it is going to be uh, – I'm praying that we have that opportunity because there's a lot of cleaning that needs yes. to be done. And, you know, like Hillary, Hillary Clinton was saying about cleaning her servers, yeah. I tell you what, that's what we need. We need to bleach all that corruption out of our system because it's needed. Absolutely. And so, uh, but, you know, going back to the, to the statement, uh, I love politics, uh, not what the politicians do, but what the public policy issues. See, one of the best things you can do for yourself is run for office because what you do is you force yourself to learn these issues. You have to think about them mm -hmm. because I guarantee you, you're going to have to be able to communicate what your position is on each and every issue. Mm -hmm. So until you run for office, uh, you're really never going to know mm -hmm. what, it, what it takes. It's a lot of hard work and being able to state your position publicly and you know not have a private private position and then a public position you have one position you know i always said is if somebody hears me on a private conversation they're going to hear me on a public conversation Absolutely. same thing yeah. hillary's hillary's way is the other way she has two positions and i don't think i is could trust all? and you know what i don't think i could trust either one uh, you know <laughs> he's probably got three or four different you know yeah so, but I, I do like the idea of passing the baton to the younger uh, people uh, and, and, and teach them what I know, what, I, what I've learned, my observations, and to make America great again. And, and I think that's what we're going to need. We're going to need to have, pass that baton and to teach the younger generation coming up so they can make America great again. So I missed some of the points. Um, I'm sorry I did that. I, I just got back a few minutes later. Um, what exactly in, in Hillary's America, what was he explaining was, was in the movie for the viewers, for the listeners? Well, he, he basically was saying, and, I, and I hopefully uh, the Republican Party is listening, the Trump campaign is listening, he wants to be able to get that movie to all the undecideds. And so, because Wonderful. that that would open up the door, uh, it would educate them. Because that's mm -hmm. what's happening is a lot of people are uneducated of who the Democratic Party really is. See, that's a big thing. They think the Democratic Party is a party that's trying to help people. But they're not. They're no. corrupt. Absolutely. And so that movie goes through step by step and outlines what they're all about. Mm -hmm. You know, what they've done. They're the, they're the, they're the party of, uh, of slavery. You know, the party of, uh, of, I think evil. Is it on the internet or how? Uh, you... and, and basically there's a website that you can go to, Hillary's America, just put it on your, uh, search on Google and you click it on yes. and there it is and yes. you can order it and, uh, it's definitely. We uh, need to watch it. You need I, to watch I, it before you vote. I definitely think it would be a good one, especially if you're undecided. There you go. See that movie and, and make your decision because this election is going to be decided by independence. Yes. 
And I understand the third party candidates, they're, they're crashing and burning. Yeah. In other words, uh, Gary Johnson and all the others, yeah. that they're not getting any, any big support right. anymore. Right. So it's, this is a two person race. This is between Hillary Clinton and, and Donald Trump. And so if, uh, if you want America back to where it needs to be, Donald Trump. John, what do you think the percentages of, of undecideds are? Even this late in the game, uh, I would say there's a good ten percent. That wow, you know, a good ten percent people still are undecided. But more importantly, the 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 part that is the bigger number is probably like forty or fifty percent of the people that aren't planning to vote. If we can just turn five percent of those people to come in and vote for Donald Trump. He'll win by landslide. Wow. So it's going to be that close. It's going to be a very, very close election. And so we can not only get the undecideds in, but the people that were not planning to vote. If we can somehow convince them to come to the polls on election to vote for Donald Trump, that's, that's, that's a winning number right there. I agree with you because, I mean, if you, when you take state by state now the polls, it seems like, you know, the Democrats have, have definitely, even the Bernie Sanders people, they've rallied around Hillary. They've come home to the base. And the Republicans, even though the establishment hasn't come home, the voters have come home. He's getting the majority over 91% of Republicans are going to vote for Donald Trump. So the base of the Republican Party has come home. And I agree with you. The undecideds and the independents are going to decide this, this election. So well, what, what I like, what I like is the statistic that just came out is that more people support Donald Trump than they do Paul Ryan's agenda. And I think that is pretty awesome. You hear that, Mr. Ryan? <laughs> and um, and so you know, I think I think what we need to do is we need to focus on um, making sure we talk to our families, friends, neighbors, and get them to go vote uh, for Donald Trump because I think change change will happen. It will happen in a very positive direction um, if if we allow Hillary Clinton to get in office. Uh, we'll have worse scandals, worse corruption. And it would get it, America would really fall apart. In fact, Russia's even talking about uh, attacking America if Hillary uh, wins. Wow, it's disastrous. I mean, it's not going to be a safe place for America no. if Hillary Clinton gets elected. Uh, you, the terrorists are going to have open borders. Six hundred thousand people are going to rush into the borders because they're going to have a free border to come in. And you know what kind of disaster that would create. Yes. Yes, it's just, it's just amazing. I mean, uh, and, and what's scary, John, is that this is their agenda. This is their plan. This is what they've sat around and, and talked about. This is what they've met with other world leaders and discussed. That is the destruction of America as we know it. And it's amazing that these people can go out and vote for Hillary Clinton. If, if, if you want to see America continue to decline, then that's what you go for. If you want to change, if you want to see America great again, if you want to see America respected, that's one of the main things that, you know, it, coming from such a proud military father, and he loves his country so much like you do, John. You are, you're ex-military. And to just see, you know, people patronize our president, you know, and he's such an apologist, like we've like America has done something wrong. What have we done wrong? We are the leaders of the free world. We keep the world safe. We used to be looked up to. We used to be admired, you know, and he goes to these places and whether it be Vladimir Putin, they laugh at him. They laugh at Secretary Clinton because they know that there are you know, Trump says it, they're simply outsmarting them. You know they're I, outsmarting them. It's 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 sad. You know, I get I get the impression I get the impression uh, just by uh, my observation of Obama is that he's really been brainwashed yes. through his lifetime. And I really get the feeling he really hates America. Yes. He hates America to the core. Absolutely, John. And he wants to, he wants to destroy it from the, the fabric of our society. Yes. It's just amazing how a man of his position could do so much. I mean, he could be a hero by doing so much, by bringing people together, uniting the country. 
but he's dividing us all. I think he honestly believes what he believes. That's what's scary. Well, yeah, he, that's what I said. He's brainwashed. Yeah. He really believes this yeah. stuff. Yeah, uh, you know, I have no doubt. I mean, he's convinced yeah. in his mind that America and what America stands for is wrong. Yes. And somehow he's going to, and he, and he really That's said why he it. Apologizes. And, and really, he did say it. He, he, he wanted change. Yes. But he wanted the kind of change that was, was going to destroy America. Absolutely. And that's what people didn't get. They didn't understand that. They thought it was for the positive. No. No, it was for the negative. No. And so Hillary and all their globalist uh, society mentality is they don't care what happens to America. I agree with you 100%. They want to see their money be more powerful yes. in America being a third world country. Yes. yes, absolutely. And you always use the word selected. He was selected. And I think that, you know, through his brainwashing, which he was on the south side of Chicago and some of those left-wing Ivy League schools that they attended, he was brainwashed into believing that big government is the answer, that socialism is the answer, that the government is the answer to your problems, that they know best for you than what you know for yourself. And he honestly, truthfully, I think what's scary is he believes it. I think he honestly believes it from the bottom of his heart. Uh, uh, you can tell he doesn't think he's doing anything malice. He really believes that I know what's best for you. Hillary knows what's best for you. Let us tell you. Let us control your health care, your money, your taxes. We know what's best for you, and we all know that that's a lie, that the money goes into their pockets. I'm sorry, the Clinton Foundation. Uh, it, it goes in their pockets. They're, they're not helping people. They're taking this money, and they're, and they're, they're, they're using it for their own benefit. And uh, But they honestly do believe that, and he feels like if he was selected, that, that that's the way things should be, that they should select the leaders. The leaders should not be uh, voted for by the people. And that's why, you know, they're against Donald Trump because he talks about freedom. And, and, and that's what they're against, actually. They're against freedom. They want socialism in this country. They want to control everything. And, you know, uh, that movie that, that the gentleman was talking about, Hillary's America, if, if you want to know what her America is going to be, you should look up that movie and watch it. And, uh, you know, th they want to take this country in a certain direction. And people wake up before it's too late, before your gun rights are taken from you. And, and, and so many other things because that's the left wing socialist movement. You know, for you to be dependent upon them and not be able to defend yourself. Those are the first two things that they want to do. And it's a shame because they use these school shootings and these police shootings as reasons to take people's guns away. I look at them as reasons why people should have more gun rights because maybe some of these people could have defended themselves against some of these nuts well, that, that yeah, have these guns. Well, you know, just, just talking about uh, the Black Lives Movement, uh, Black Lives Matter movement, uh, they just did a polling on law enforcement and how the public felt about yes, that. Yes, I saw that, John. And it's truly amazing. It's absolutely <laughs> opposite. opposite. Uh, the, the people favor police yes. officers and, and they're thankful for what the job that they Absolutely. do in keeping America safe. And, and it's really... So Black uh, Lives I, Matter is wrong is what you said. I, I'm saying it's wrong. I'm sorry to say, let me break the bubble break here. The news. It's wrong. And you guys are wrong. Right. And you know what? Right. Get a life and do something that's very productive. Did you see the statistic? 6% of African Americans... Uh, uh, police officers have to use excessive force with 6% of the confrontation, the arrest in the African American community is 16.6% among Caucasians. Yep. Yeah, so it's almost that. triple the amount yeah. they had to use deadly force on whites than they did blacks. Yeah. So <laughs> it, it, it's just, it's just amazing how the media portrays all this stuff. You know, it's like, come on, you know, media, be truthful to America. America deserves to had to have truth coming out of the media. You guys got a a government license, yeah. FCC yeah. license. Any other industry that was fraudulent and what they do would be put out of business. I'm telling you what, media, you deserve to be put out of business. I don't know. I think Obama would bail them out. Well, uh, <laughs> what I under, what I understand is going to happen, and this is what I don't mark my word on this. I hope I'm wrong, but uh, if uh, or when Donald Trump is elected president on November 8th, right after that, Obama's going to pardon Hillary Clinton of all her wrongdoing. Wow. 
that would be you could possibly you could be right on that. You could be right on that. Wouldn't that be something? Hmm. So there you go. You heard uh, it you first go. on conservative uh, roundtable. My prediction right. is Obama is going to pardon Hillary Clinton. I would also advise the people to look up the merger, uh, $85 billion merger between AT&T and Time Warner. Um, that's one of the main things Trump talked about. He said, when I'm elected, I'm going to stop that merger. That would be a disaster for people. Uh, they would manipulate over 70% of the communications um, uh, uh, business, and then you know, so your choice would go down. And, and then, you know, they had the nerve. The two presidents of the company had the nerve to come on Fox Business and say, you know, you would have more choice. You wouldn't have more choice. Your prices would go up, and you would have less choice. So these large conglomerates, you know, that Obama and and Secretary Clinton have allowed to take place while he was in office, you know, and they're getting kickbacks from allowing those mergers to take place. It's just a disaster. So. You know, uh, John, thank you again for having me on the show today. Well, Chris, thank you. Uh, Chris Garcia from Mail by Renee. Um, and um, thank and also a host, co-host of uh, the Face of Tribune. Thank you, thank you for your great uh, 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 information and uh, input and advice. Uh, my name is John Estrada, Conservative Roundtable. Uh, this has been a very great um, informational uh, conversation with some very uh, powerful uh, Americans that uh, work hard to, to make America great again. So we thank you. We appreciate uh, you uh, talking with, I mean, listening to us. And uh, we'll talk to you tomorrow, 1 o'clock uh, Pacific Standard Time. Thank you.